Good morning. Um, it's good to be back, even if it's only for a day. Um, if you'll stand with me while I read scripture, and then we'll start with happy day. Psalm 33, 1 through 3. Shout for the Lord. Shout for joy in the Lord. O you righteous, praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. to believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. You may be seated.
people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation and you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God and they shall reign on earth.
I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm going to ask you to stand on our very last song this morning. I'll stand here, please.
Um, I pray for all of our hearts this morning, Lord, Lord, that are heavy or lighthearted, that you will attend to our needs and have your will be done. And I pray you'll be with Mr. John and with all of our people who are um, worshiping through speeches today. God, that you will just um, give them your words and not theirs. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, the Young Adult Bible Study will be pushed back to next Sunday. Again, the Young Adult Bible Study will be pushed back to next Sunday. We have a lot of people who are on uh, spring, break, spring break this week, so we will have no CTS group practice this Wednesday. We will have our regular Wednesday night service at 6 p.m. for adults and young people as well. But again, no 5 o'clock CTS group practice this week. March 25th is a Saturday. Uh, it is a work day at camp. I'm really excited. Again, I've shared this before, but, you know, we have had 19, as early as 1936 to as young as 1942, World War II barrack bunks. And we have been able to upgrade those. So we're going to be moving those out. Matter of fact, that Friday night, for those who like to paint, that Friday night, they're going to move those out and paint the whole entire dorm, girl's side and guy's side. And then on Saturday, we will move in 100 new bunks are new to us, they're four years old, brand new bunks. Uh, so if you can help out with that, please let me know. I do believe we'll start that Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, Fellowship Mill will be Sunday, March 26th. I think that's next weekend. Also, if you're in CTS competition, if you're a child in CTS competition, I need to know their name, their current grade level, not what they're going to be, what they're currently in this year, and their category, exactly what they're doing. If you need some help with that, let me know. i got to turn those in. I need those no later than next Sunday. So if they're doing puppets, if they're doing creative writing, if they're doing Bible memorization, you need to let me know exactly what they're doing so we can get them registered. I need that no later than next Sunday. Uh, Easter, again, just around the corner. We had several bags donated. I know some cash has been donated to help buy candy. Thank you for that. Easter Sunday service changes. Listen to this time. This is for Easter Sunday only. We will have a sunrise service, and that's S-O-N, not S-U-N, at 7 a.m. across at the crosses, okay? 7 a.m. At 8 o'clock, we will have breakfast. At 9 o'clock, we will have our Sunday school classes, all ages. And at 10 o'clock, we'll have our morning worship service. And right after service, we'll have our egg hunt at 11. So again, that is different changes. It's not our normal time. So again, that is Easter Sunday only. Please, number one, be praying about that service. Here's what I know to be true. The top one, two, or three services that unbelievers will go to are usually Mother's Day, Easter, and Christmas. Dads, we're all left off the top three. But anyway, Mother's Day, Christmas, Easter, one of those top three that have changed different categories. Please invite the unsaved. Easter is when they'll probably show up, and we're going to definitely share the word of God and share the gospel with them. So please be praying for that. Also, this is kind of unique. We have had someone sponsor some D6 tickets. So if you ever want to be a part of the D6 conference, it's in Orlando. This is for the conference only. You still have to make your way, still have hotel expenses, and you also still have your food expenses. If you would like to be a part of the D6 conference, it's the 10th, 11th, and 12th. It's a Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in Orlando. I literally have tickets. They're about 350 bucks a piece. They will be donated. They have already been donated. So if you're interested, and this could be a college student, this can be married folks, if you're interested in learning more about intergenerational ministry, D6 Conference is the way to go. It is it has been created and made by our denomination. Of course, Random House Publication, many of you guys know that. We use that in our Sunday school uh, material uh, curriculum. They're phenomenal. But uh, Wendy and I had opportunity to go a couple years back, and we have had someone donate some tickets to go. If you'll like to be a part of that, please let me know. We can talk more about that after service. Any other announcements? Anything overlooked? April 16th. I know it's next month, but I want you to go ahead and plan because we don't usually have a Sunday night service, but we will have our youth CTS showcase. What we usually do is allow our, our uh, puppet teams, our human videos, our solos, uh, 
to have their opportunity to show it in public, and then we'll have a dinner afterwards sponsored by the youth. It is a fundraiser. I know we usually have some fun with our pie auctions. I've learned that some of you like to go against me on those pie auctions. But anyway, that's okay. It's a good reason. And I, I know even our youth last year made some wonderful desserts for auction off. So if you'd like to be a part of that, that will start at 5 p.m. on the 16th of April. Okay. All right, at this time we'll have our junior children's church. This is our preschool children's church. Head back to the back with Miss Miranda. That's a couple of you guys. All righty. And our children's church, first through sixth grade. Miss Penny will be meeting you guys back there in the back. Praise the Lord for our kiddos. Amen. It's so exciting to have our kiddos with us. Our little kiddos and our bigger kiddos, as Kaylin mentioned. Her and Alexander are both home from Welch College. Uh, they have been on spring break, and they're actually heading back this afternoon. Pray for all of our Welch students who will be heading out to uh, back to college this weekend, all right, today. Uh, pray for their safety. I will ask you also, uh, Alexander has had the opportunity. He will be, um, in two weekends, he will be flying up to Ohio to visit a church, and they're going to be looking at him to be their youth pastor. So they're going to be interviewing him and for that opportunity. So pray for him that God's will will be done in that situation, that the church will know and that Alexander will know if he's the right person for that job. So we're really excited for him. Of course, he'll be graduating this May. we got a lot of traveling to do in April and May between the musicals that they're both in this year. And uh, so we're going to have several opportunities back up in Nashville, so our Nashville area. So if you would, continue to pray for him. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we continue our book, uh, studying the book of James. Father God, we thank you for each and every person that's here today. Father, I pray, God, that you'll bless each and every one. Lord, we do thank you for our little kiddos and, Lord, those who are teaching today and working in the nursery. Lord, we pray, God, that you'll bless them, encourage them. Lord, we have so many great volunteers here at our church, and, Lord, we thank you for them. I pray, Father, that you'll bless them in a mighty way, not just today, Lord, but every day of their lives. Father, we thank you for our college students, Lord, who are those who are at BC, uh, BCF right here in Graceville and uh, those who are Welch as well. I pray, God, you'll bless them as they study more about you and your word and as they minister, Lord, in their local schools and local churches. I pray, God, you'll bless them greatly. Uh, be with them as we, they're traveling today, Lord. Father, for those who are sick and maybe couldn't be with us today, I pray, God, just bless them and encourage them and strengthen them today. Father, as we look into your word, we ask, Father, that you'll help, number one, fix my mind on you. Help me to say the words you want me to say. And I pray, Lord, truly, I say this so many times, but Lord, truly, it is my heart. Father, speak to hearts in ways that I cannot. And I trust you to do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, just looking at a four-point out outline, we started last week. Point one, life is fragile. It is short. We never know when it's going to end for us. Many of us have been blessed to live beyond, well, others our age. Many of us have lived beyond our own children. Many of us have lived beyond our spouses. But the reality is today may be the last day we're here today. And that's kind of morbid for some of us to think about. So it's so important that we remember life is fragile, number one. Number two, that if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, today's a good day to do so. Don't wait until it's too late. Point two, God is sovereign. He is in absolute control. And even in his sovereignty. Him being sovereign, he gives us something called a free will to either accept him or reject, reject him. And I'm so thankful that he calls us to him. In point three, we're going to kick in today the sin of pride. And point four, hopefully we'll be able to finish today is do it. So point three, the sin of pride. Scripture tells us in Proverbs chapter three, verse seven. Now, if you remember last week, we kind of closed out with a verse. I encourage you, two verses, maybe to memorize this, maybe talk about it at your home. It's something that we've talked about with all four of our children as they were growing up, and it's something that goes something like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all that you do, and he will direct your path, or he will show you which path to take. Now, rarely do I go now to verse 7. But in studying and preparing for this, I feel like God wants us to point out verse 7 as well. And so this is where we're going to start, okay? It kind of is a little bit of kick in the pants, at least to me. Maybe it's not to you, but I feel like maybe this is a little bit of kick in the pants for me. So let's see how you think. Scripture says, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord. And turn away from evil. Have you ever 
felt like you have finally figured it out? Anybody? I mean, you're working on this pro project, maybe this problem. You're like, wow, I I've been working on this and working on it. For me, I would say, I just can't get my head wrapped around this. I've struggled. I've prayed. I've sought advice. I've sought counsel. counsel. I just can't get my head around it. I'll go to sleep. I'll pray about it. And sometimes next morning, they're like, I get it. I finally got it. Praise the Lord. I got my head wrapped around it. I get it. I figured it out. <whistles> Roadrunner, he finally figured out how to get, I mean, the, the coyote finally figured out how to get a roadrunner in. <whistles> That's been me. Whatever it is, have you ever feel like, hey, I got this. I know what I'm talking about. Now, I want to tell you something, and I'm going to pick at some of us a little bit. So if this is you, take it. If it's not, don't become you. Some of us loves it when people seek us for advice. Because we lived a lot. We've had a lot of experiences, good, bad, and ugly ones. And it's great when we can tell them, don't do what I did. Hello? Don't do mm, like I did. <laughs> don't do it that way. I can tell you how I really messed it up. Then sometimes we're like, well, I'm glad you came to me because I've been very successful at this. I'm going to show you exactly what you should do. Here's the three little steps. If we're not careful, whew, the sin of pride can kick in. Sometimes we figured it out. You know, we, figured, we finally figured God out. Have you ever been there? You finally feel like you finally figured God out? How about this one? You finally figured people out, right? Oh, here's one. I finally figured out this relationship. Ooh, 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 ooh. You finally figured out your money. You finally got a good working budget. You know you can do it. Life is great, right? And there's more month at the end of the money. And you're wondering what happened. Anybody ever been there? How about this? You finally figured out your job. You know, you've been there for a long time. You've gone through training. You know what you have to do. And guess what they do? It's been 60 days. It's time to upgrade your password. No, you can't use what you've used the last 1,500 years. You've got to change that password. And it can't be what you've used. It can't even look like what you used. That's just passwords. Then all of a sudden, they change the whole entire system. Have you ever just worked with anybody? You were a customer, no matter where you were. And they're like, I'm sorry. They just changed the system. We can't figure this out. This new updated system is driving me crazy. You ever just feel like me? Will you please call somebody who knows what they're doing? I gotta go. I gotta go to the bathroom. Not now. You know, please, right? They figure it out. You ever been at your job and they figure you figured it out and they change the system on you? Here you go. You finally figured out your health. You know exactly what's wrong with you. Then we get to the doctor, and the doctor says, nope, that's not right. <laughs> they could be right or not. Remember, every doctor we go to are just practicing medicine. How about this one? You finally figured out your parents. Young people. <laughs> so I used to travel to quartet. And, uh, of course, Miranda started off college her freshman year at Welch and uh, studying psychology. And her roommate wound up being the daughter of one of the guys I travel with in Quartet. And he looks at her and said, are you studying psychology so you can finally figure out your dad? <laughs> She's like, no. She's like, he, and he has a degree in psychology today. He said, I still haven't been to figure out your dad, and I've known him for a long time. How about this one? You finally figured out your kids. <laughs> How about your coworkers? I figured out our pastor. I got him. I, I got his number. I have figured him out. How about your Sunday school teacher? You have figured out your Sunday school teacher. You know exactly what they want when they need it. How about your students, those of you who teach? <laughs> Can't the list go on and on and on? If we're not careful, we can say we've got it all figured out. We'd be really impressed. And if we're not careful, our wisdom and our pride will let us down. Now, James tells us, if you remember, we talked about 
James introduced this last week with the idea of some of you will go to such and such a city, you're going to stay there for a year, you're going to make profit. And, and, and that whether that's a businessman or just business people, they were going to do that. And James says, it would have been better for you to say, if the Lord wills, we'll go there, we'll work a year, we'll make profit, if the Lord wills. Now he goes on to verse 16 of chapter 4, he says, if you don't do this, if you would, otherwise you're boasting about your own potential plans and all such boasting is evil. Folks, if we're going to live out loud our faith, we must live in a way that says, God, your will be done. Now, in our Sunday school class today, we talked about in 1 Peter, uh, I think it was chapter 2 and chapter 4, I can't remember exactly at this moment, but we talked about the idea a mature Christian will live the way Christ did when it comes to suffering. Sometimes as Christians, we have to put aside what we want to do God's will. And doing God's will sometimes is uncomfortable. You realize it was God's will for Jesus to be born as a babe of a virgin, to live a perfect life, to have a ministry for about three, three and a half years, turn the local religion upside down on their, on their head, and then die on an old rugged cross. He was spat upon. He was mocked, he was beaten, he was put upon his head, a crown of thorns. He was nailed to an old rugged cross, and he bled, and he gave up his physical life. He experienced hell on the cross for you and I. Folks, I want you to understand, that was God's plan. Now, I want to say something to you, and this may offend you, but I want you to hear truth. If God did that to his son, what makes you think your life is always going to be a bed of roses? There's preachers out there to say, name it and claim it, and you got all these great things, and if you're a really good Christian, all these wonderful things are going to happen to you. Our Savior, our Savior suffered. And he had the attitude of willingness to be obedient to the Father, even obedient to death. I want us to take that in for just a moment. Sometimes our plans may be good. They may be for ministry. And sometimes even good ministerial type plans may not be exactly what God wants you to do at this moment. Or this day. This week or this month. So many times we make these plans and we presume that we're going to do great at it. And we, hey, have you ever prayed like this? Lord, I really need your help. Now, Father, I have thought every way this side of Sunday exactly how this needs to go. And Lord, if you would bless the way I want you to do it, it'll happen like this, like this, and like this. And Lord, if you do it this way, I know for sure it is exactly what you want me to do and I know you're blessing me. Has anybody else besides me been guilty of that? I see several of your heads shaking. You know. Well, well, Gideon did it. If he really wants me to do it, I, I want everything around this fleece to be completely soaking wet, but the fleece to be dry. Were you testing the Lord? Okay, God was patient with Gideon. He's patient with you and I too sometimes. And then he just, mm, I don't want to thump that mic. That would be really loud, but bow. Sometimes God got to get my attention. Hello? Size 10 or 12? Sometimes we pray, Lord, let my will be done on earth as it should be in heaven. Is that not heresy? Tr truly, that would be heresy, wouldn't it? God, let my will be done in heaven and on earth in my life the way I want you to want me to do it. <laughs> the way I want me to want you to do it. That is wrong. That is not the way we should live. He's God. He's sovereign, not John. Put your name where I put mine. Let's go on. Psalms 10, 4 says, The wicked are too proud to seek God. They seem to think that God is dead. Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before the fall. Proverbs 16, 19 says, Better to live humbly with the poor 
than to share plunder with the proud. Proverbs 8, 13 says, All who fear the Lord will hate evil. Listen to this. He said, Therefore I hate pride and arrogance, corruption and perverse speech. I still remember I was a youth pastor in North Carolina. We were only there 13 months. We had some good times. We had some rough times. And I can tell you story after story of that very first ministry. I was 23. My pastor was 63. He had never had anybody on staff before. And he had been associate pastor when he was a very young man. And he wanted me to do exactly what his pastor did to him 40-something years earlier. He wanted me on the roads knocking doors every day. I'm not going to lie, I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. I never liked door-to-door sales. I've done that kind of stuff in my life, in a job, just to put food on the table. I've not been very good at it. I don't like rejection. Some of you have no clue what I'm talking about because you've never done this. You, you, you really don't know. But I learned to go door-to-door, and not one person came to Christ, not one person ever visited church. And to me, I thought it was a big waste of time. And I fought it. I didn't have the right attitude. That's the truth. Everybody with me. That I, I didn't do well at 23. <sighs> I was pretty. Well, to name the guy who place I took, he was a youth pastor before I got there. He was a volunteer youth pastor. He was in his 60s. And I got there at 23. And they hired me as a youth, an associate pastor. And they asked him to step down for the new guy. Number one, do you think that went well? He accepted it by their view. But as soon as I showed up, guess who was my best friend? sarcastically John said and after a few weeks he came to my office and the pastor's right there in his office our doorway's both open he's hearing everything and he starts to tell me how arrogant I was and I told him there's a fine line between arrogant and confidence I'm just very confident arrogantly he said at 23 have you ever been there I think in my early 20s, I was pretty arrogant. I think in my first ministry, I was ready to destroy hell and attack it with a water gun. Especially when you're a youth pastor, right? Water gun, Nerf gun, that's what you do. And I knew, I had just graduated from the Free Will Baptist Bible College. I knew everything there was. Wow. That's called Welch College today. Has anybody else ever been like that ever in your life? Thanks for your honesty. We used to call it senioritis. I mean, you know, you knew everything. You were sick of school. Couldn't be taught. You weren't teachable anymore. I hate pride and arrogance. Now, look how it's grouped in. Corruption and perverse speech. Corruption and perverse speech. Folks, dealing with sin, the sin of pride, is a constant battle. Because now at 49, I have to be careful that I don't struggle with thinking I know. I sat with a few preachers the other day. Alexander came with us, and we were talk, started talking, and somebody finally, finally asked, hey, how long have you been in the ministry? How long have you been in the ministry? And I realized when it was all said and over, One or two of those guys were a little bit older than me, but I've been in ministry almost at least 10 years longer than all of them. And part of me just kind of got excited about that. I could teach these guys a thing or two. Everybody hear me? Hear hear the temptation went through my head? I, I I could help these guys. I mean, I could teach them some things. And I had to really be careful of that. Because the sin of pride is a constant battle. Folks, I want you to understand that pride has kept many people away from accepting Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. A prideful person has a hard time admitting sin and acknowledging that their own strength, that we can absolutely do nothing to inherit eternal life in our own strength. I go back to the TV show Happy Days. Everybody remember Happy Days? I watched reruns of it, most likely. It came out in the early mid-70s, if I remember right. I watched it probably in the early 80s, reruns. But the Fonz had a problem. The Fonz always thought he was right. 
and he couldn't say, I'm sorry. What man makes a bathroom his office? I mean, come on. That alone should have threw, every, threw all of us off. But, you know, we thought he was cool with the leather jacket and motorcycle, right? Again, pride can be an ongoing stumbling block. The scripture teaches that we are not to boast about anything. And if we boast about anything, we should boast about God. So why is pride so sinful? I'm proud of my church. I'm proud of our college students who are going off to Bible college to study scripture, to study how to minister to other people. I'm proud of each and every one of you who step up to take out the trash to wash dishes, to go change a dirty diaper. I'm proud of you guys for showing up and being here today. Now, yes, there's a little bit different pride there. But if I'm not careful, I can get really boastful about my pride. I still remember my first church. You guys heard me talk about it. I've had one, I had one supporting deacon out of three in that first church. Corky was his nickname. Everybody knew him as Corky. Corky taught me a song when I was 25. It goes something like this. Oh, it's so hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. Anybody know that song? He sang it just like that in Southern California. <laughs> he had the Southern train twang in there, you know. I want you to think about this for a moment. You see, pride is given ourselves the credit for something that God has accomplished. I want to say that again. Pride is giving ourselves the credit for something God has accomplished. Period. You see, when we practice the sin of pride, we're taking the glory that belongs to God and God alone, and we keep it for ourselves. It has been said that pride is essentially self-worship. I want you guys to hear me now. And we're going to read another verse here in just a second. But I want you to hear me. Anything. I mean absolutely anything that we have or we will ever accomplish has been possible. And will not be possible if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. Now listen to the next verse. 1 Corinthians 4 and 7 says this. What do you have that hasn't, excuse me, what do you have that God hasn't given you? Let that sink in for just a moment. As you're thinking of that, God gave you that brain. As you are not even thinking about it, but God gave you those beats that your heart is beeping and pumping the blood through. And you're not even thinking about it, but God gave you the actual ability to breathe in oxygen into your lungs and breathe out carbon dioxide. Second part of that verse says, And if everything you have is from God, why boast as though it were not a Folks, I stand before you as someone who's been very guilty of the sin of pride. And I stand before you as somebody who struggles with it sometimes daily. Sometimes God just gets my attention and is like, Lord, what did I miss? What have I done? <laughs> Woo, what did I do to deserve that? And then I have to rethink, Lord, thank you. That one's hard, isn't it? Lord, thank you for correcting me and keeping me on the straight and narrow path. Because broad is the way that leads to hell. Hello? All right, let's go to point four. Hopefully we'll finish this up today. We're doing good on time. Do it. Do it. Do it. James 4, 17 says this. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Yeah, there's no way we're going to finish this today. Okay. So I'm going to drive this point home, and I'll probably have to take two weeks to do it because I, 
I want us to get it. Okay? It is sinful to pursue evil. It is sinful to pursue evil. It is just as sinful to not do good. I want that to get into We're taking a pause for a moment because I want you to get that. It is sinful to pursue evil. It is just as sinful to not do good. So let's talk about the big churchy words, okay, that you learn in Bible college, okay? The sin of commission is pursuing evil or doing sinful things. The sin of omission is not pursuing good, not doing the right thing, or if you would, good things. So James says, remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then do not do it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace. Lord, I thank you for this dear church and each person here this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would bless them greatly. Lord, if you're calling any to salvation, I pray right now that you will call them and they will know you're calling them to repentance. Lord, help them to confess their sins and put their trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior by faith. Father, if there's Christians here, Lord, they've been struggling and not, well, let's just be honest, they're pursuing evil, not pursuing good. They're not pursuing you. Maybe, maybe they're struggling with pride. I pray, Lord, you forgive us. Lord, help us to uh, repent of this the sin of pride. Lord, help us to live and boast only about Jesus Christ and what you've done for us. For truly, Lord, every good and perfect gift comes from you. As the song said earlier, Lord, all my life you have been so faithful. Lord, all my life you have been so, so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm so unworthy, Lord. but you have chosen the foolishness of preaching to share your word. Follow up your word burn within us this week. Help us to seek you. Help us live for you. Help us live our faith out loud. Help us to honor you. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.